Qué nos pandilla, ya estoy aquí en vivo, bienvenidos todos a este stream especial, vamos a hacer aquí un co-stream del Speed Blumen legendario de Halo Reach de Awesome Games on Quick 2019, así como ya he hecho en anteriores co-streams. Déjenme aquí editar rápidamente un filtro que estoy haciendo de mi pantalla verde. Ok, creo que... Voy a tener que dejarlo así, voy a hacer más pequeño entonces mi webcam porque ahorita la iluminación es un rollo. Porque ustedes saben, yo estoy acostumbrado a hacer streams de día, no de ¿qué? de noche, no de día. Así que la iluminación de lo de la pantalla verde es un show. Un saludo a todas las personas que ya están aquí. Bienvenidos, vamos a ver a continuación un speedrun. Vamos a ver la campaña completa de Halo Reach en dificultad legendaria en cooperativo. Déjenme, me voy ya directo a Twitch porque ya está a punto de iniciar. Hola, un saludo, un saludo a los 87 espectadores. ¿Qué onda? ¿Qué onda? Todavía no inicia, todavía no inicia, no se preocupen. Todavía no inicia, don't worry, don't worry. Déjenme quitar el audio del escritorio. A ver, browser, browser. También voy a hacer esto más pequeñito. Ok, ahí está. From Ok, aquí está. Como ven, ahí ya dice Halo Reach a continuación. Pues bueno, les comento este rápidamente, para los que no tengan información de este evento. Déjenme quitar mis cosas. No me siento bien poniendo ahí mis cositas ahorita. Ok, ahí está. Bueno, ahora sí. Awesome Games on Quick es un evento que se lleva a cabo dos veces al año... El evento es ahorita Awesome Games on Quick, juegos asombrosos terminados rápidamente. Y el otro evento es Summer Games on Quick, que es en verano. Este es un evento benéfico de videojuegos. En este evento juegan todos los videojuegos que ustedes se imaginan, de todas las consolas, de todas las épocas, de todas las plataformas, Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, aquí lo tienen. Pues bueno... El speedrun se trata de acabar un juego de la manera más rápida posible. Por medio de trucos, glitches, bugs o simplemente jugando de una manera sorprendente el juego. Pues bueno, este evento es 7 días, su duración, 24 horas al día. Van jugando un juego nuevo, juego nuevo, juego nuevo, juego nuevo. Y se juntan donaciones, se juntan donativos para la caridad. ¿Ok? Estos donativos van para sociedades benéficas y el evento en esta ocasión está beneficiando a la Sociedad de Prevención del Cáncer, que esta Sociedad de Prevención del Cáncer es la única que se dedica a que la mejor forma de combatir el cáncer es, pues, que no te dé cáncer. O sea, todo esto por medio de hacerle estudios a las personas de manera gratuita, llevarlas a hacer sus estudios, educación, información, prevención. Entonces, lo que ahorita estamos a punto de ver es una parte que, pues, obviamente a ustedes les gusta bastante, a mí me gusta también bastante, que es un juego de Halo jugado en el maratón. Vamos a ver Halo Reach en legendario. ¿Y qué creen? Les tengo una noticia muy buena. Uno de los jugadores que va a jugar ahorita Halo Reach en legendario es mexicano. Exacto, Pedro Gas, así se llama. Ok. Los dos jugadores que van a jugar a continuación, déjenles comento cuál es el otro exactamente, Wolfie, Wolfie es uno de los jugadores que va a jugar y el otro es Pedro Gas. Pedro Gas es un chavo mexicano, tiene 22 años de edad y ahorita lo vamos a ver, y creo que ya está iniciando, ahí está, vámonos, ahí está. Okay. Este es Wolfie de la izquierda y el de la derecha es Pedro Gas. I'm Byron. 
And this is gonna be Halo Reach cool. Ok, pues Later. bueno. Más yeah, que nada vamos a dejarlo aquí. Scene, so... Venga, bienvenidos todos al stream. Right around... Now. Shoot down attempts are likely, so keep your distance. Yes, sir. Ok, ya inicio, déjenme publicar en mis redes sociales Voy a dejar tantito ahorita el audio del stream, ahorita les comento un poco más After the movement, you'll see some enemies. There's a cool trick, cool out of bounds. But until then, just some good running. So one thing you'll see at the start, as soon as I get out, is slide jumping. Slide jumping is something that is in every Halo game, where if you just land on an angle and jump, you kind of preserve the momentum that you would get from the angle. You just go a bit faster. So that saves a couple seconds at the start bit, and it's used for Elder Run whenever they can. Right here, there's the barrier that keeps him in the map, but Pedro's gonna jump off Wolfie's head to go over the barrier. So that's technically the first out of bounds, what, a minute in the run? <laughs> Before going straight back in bounds. The movement at the start here, it looks easy, it's a little bit tricky, because you can slide off those rocks really easily, and because you want to keep jumping, you can accidentally slide jump off those rocks and then just fly straight off. Now you'll see Pedro floating. This is a barrier that's meant to stop you going on top of the building. But it's a huge box that covers the whole building, so we can just float along it. It saves going through the building, which is like 10 seconds. But what's more important is it skips some triggers. So for this beginning bit, they'll be hitting triggers backwards. So, Pedro right there, he got a weapon, the plasma pistol, and the plasma pistol is a great effect. It can EMP vehicles. And as you saw, shoot that EMP, spawn that Falcon. As soon as it spawns, EMP it immediately. Let this vehicle? Yeah, literally. This vehicle, you know I'm gonna fly this until the seventh mission? Or pilot it at least? So, flying this vehicle this early, it's kinda crazy. It was one of the first big glitches found out when this game was released in 2010. So with this, they're just gonna fly over every enemy. One thing that's important with this Falcon is you're invincible in it. Unless you fly like head on into something, you won't die. Which is important because they're on legendary, they're gonna be they're gonna get killed a lot. <laughs> so with this bit of the mission, they're gonna be going to hit a couple of triggers. There is uh, two marine groups you need to save. So Wolfie's gonna go to one of the marine groups. Yeah. And he's gonna hang out. And with this, there's gonna be some spirits come down. There's like a couple of spirits. You may not kill them. And then the Falcon will come pick you up. The problem with that is the Falcon that picks you up, you're already in it. So that Falcon can't pick you up. <laughs> so why is David positioning himself in that location? Okay, uh, Wolfie was kind of near the spirit, because if you go too far away, you, it flies a weird path, and we want to use the path that it flies to clip out of bounds. Because every map is like stuck, well, you're stuck in like barriers, but like weird soft barriers, they're not like solid walls. They're just kind of soft barriers. So he's going to get stuck in this spirit. From Pedro's screen, you can see it easier. Wolfie's going to take a bit of damage, most likely. Yeah. But thankfully, because we're invincible, and he's clipped out of bounds. There's a big sequence break in the game. Don't have to do any of the first combat. And thankfully, we can just load the next part of the mission, the outpost. Now, the outpost, there's going to be a couple bits of wave fighting. There's uh, three spirits that come down in total. You kill all the enemies. Your teammates will shut the door, open the next door. You continue with the mission. But they're the only enemies from here we're actually going to kill. Because Wolfie is still out of bounds in this Falcon, he's going to load the other area where he got the Falcon first, which deloads the outpost where Pedro's at right now, and will teleport him because that area doesn't exist. And then they're going to reload the outpost, and when they do that, 
you just don't have to kill any enemies. Like, I'm not too sure why, no one knows why, it's, it works and that's what's important. That's all we care about, if it works, it works. <laughs> so he's gonna wait for this spirit to spawn, that's the second spirit, and then he'll hit the load for the outpost, fly back in, and he didn't have to kill any of the enemies. So Pedro stand on top of his falcon, because there's a small chance that Wolfie can get stuck inside the falcon, which didn't happen. Getting stuck inside that falcon's really unfortunate, and that can kill solo runs really easily. So you can also see on Wolfie's screen, there's a big hole to the void, where there's meant to be a door. So they're gonna wait for their teammate to close the door. Just about there. We're in. And without dialogue, the door that she closes doesn't close. And there's a death barrier outside, kills everything. And this room appears out of nowhere. Nice. So that's the first part of the mission. The second part of the mission, it doesn't take very long. But this is the action, this is where you start shooting. It's Halo, it takes six minutes to start shooting enemies. This is where the Zella was uh, located, correct? Yeah. So this enemy that's shooting at is an elite Zealot. Unfortunately, it just ran away, which is really unlucky. Why is that? He doesn't like it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the Zealot's the second strongest elite type in the game. And there's three of them in this area. They wanted to kill that one as soon as they could. To only have two to deal with afterwards. Ooh. So yeah, one other thing with that Plasma Pistol is this EMP. It does take down enemy shields immediately. So they can use that. There's one more zealot, that sword, with one shot on legendary, and that's the last zealot. That weapon that he has okay, is yes, a yes, yes, rifle, we'll be seeing that later on, and that's the end of the first level, we have time for like one donation. Y se dieron cuenta, terminaron el nivel en legendario en 6 minutos con 30 segundos en legendario. Así de rápido se lo echaron. Ya. Yeah. Awesome. This level, second level is only sword based. Okay, yeah. It's not a really long level, but it's a lot of combat. So this first okay, bit, just before nivel, they can sword base. the next area of the mission, they need to kill every enemy. So Pedro and Wolfie, they've split up. They're picking off different enemies. Uh, Wolfie's mainly focusing, like he's down there trying to EMP the elites, get their shields down. Pedro's at top, so if he can't see the enemies, Ok, como ven la estrategia que están haciendo Uno le baja los escudos de energía con la pistola de plasma Y otro ya acaba con él And that's not by choice, that's just because it's, it's only here in the whole game. They added something once, and they never used it again. So with a Tiger Locator, what it does is it cools an airstrike. Okay, like miren. Seven missiles come down, Aquí Pedro and toma just obliterate Wolfie. And we use it uh, twice on Legendary. Se adelanta. So it looks a bit weird that Wolfie is running forward. Se pasan esa parte de lo del Wraith y el Warper. But with this level, there's a lot of uh, backtracking. So there's two objectives to do, three buttons to press, Wolfie's gonna go press all them, and Pedro's gonna be waiting to just go back to where you're meant to go. So Wolfie's getting the ghost, he'll tiger locate the enemies, because there's a lot of enemies, a few elites, stuff that will kill him in really, in like nothing. Okay, recordemos esta misión, porque tenemos que activar los puntos para poder pasarla. And then this button, I don't know if you saw the prompt in the top right of the screen. Ahí Wolfie utilizó el localizador de objetivos para poder activarlo rápido. Pedro se quedó en la parte inicial del mapa, como pueden ver. Ahí tienen otro punto de control. So right now uh, Wolfie's driving to the second part, where the other two buttons are. And that Faltan movement dos botones por activar. Those ghosts, if you're not like kind of perfect with it, they'll melt you and that's it, you're gone. So this button, you press. Ahí está el botón. Oh, you didn't press the AA gun. That's. Ahí ya la cagaron. That's tough. 
ya le agregó so Wolfie, tenía que activar la arma antiaérea para poder uh, seguir avanzando y por eso pusieron el último punto de control porque se le fue a activar el arma antiaérea ya valió el tiempo que habían ganado Ok, ahora sí ya puede activar ese botón. Ya están los dos en esa parte del inicio. We can have a couple more donations if you want. So they're just going to be running. Right. Uh, sure, we have $117 from Clerical Eric. Spartans never die. Save the frames and. Una cara de donar $117. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of war, war, war and I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm not a good elite. I'm sorry. I never made it uh, to that level. We also have uh, $5 from Ustario. Green from, greens from Mexico. Pedro, I hope you are having fun and we want to see that world record. If Pedro says hi, I'm Goku in Spanish, I'll, I'll double the donation. Oh. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Goku. <laughs> okay, ahí murió uno. So with those hunters, they're the only two enemies you have to kill in this area. So we can leave those grunts and Natalie alive. Uy, 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 uy. To get in the elevator, Gas. all you need to do is kill those hunters. Now it looked like Wolfie's just a horrible person punching Pedro repeatedly. But there's a trick in the next Hay un truco del por qué está matando a su compañero. It's, it's an overload. Um, es para sobrecargar el nivel. Help overload this next area. Not by much, but it's it's enough to like help. So, no ayuda demasiado, pero ayuda um, un poco. What Wolfie's doing is he'll be going straight forward and Pedro would have got the con Oh, that was unfortunate. So Pedro's going to want to get a concussion rifle uh, that we saw on the first level. And with that, they can do some jumps. So the concussion rifle, it's like a grenade launcher, but it explodes on impact. And it's really Aquí weird. el chiste es que tienen que tomar so el rifle de conclusión del Elite like, Ultra para poder saltar con él. Recuerden like, que con él pueden hacer unos fight. jumps. Just from jumping and shooting. Fortunately, only had one body in there because one of the bodies clipped through the floor. Which is because the elevator's moving, it just okay, ahora ahí sí ya lo tomaron. It's weird physics. So Pedro's gonna do some concussion jumps to get to the top. Ahí está lo de los trucos. Por eso es el rifle de concusión. To hit the loads to spawn the enemies. And when he spawns the enemies, that helps with the overload. So with the overload, you wouldn't want to kill anyone, you wouldn't want anyone to die. Y como ven ahí se pasaron hasta el final, saltándose todos los niveles. De la base sur. Si hubieran hecho más lo del overload, el Phantom no hubiera aparecido. But that phantom can't die until it goes back out. So about now it can die. I think, I think Pedro shot himself. He did. He <laughs> definitely did. So to end this level, uh, they just need every enemy in this area to die. So that phantom, the elites, the banshees. 
which is why I'd actually run them out. After all these die, that will be the end Aquí of the no level. Aquí no pueden pasar el nivel sin matar el resto de los enemigos. stuck out of bounds, and it's effectively a soft lock. So if you spend too long looking for them, you get a checkpoint every two minutes in this area, and if you get too many checkpoints, then you just have to restart. <laughs> be unfortunate. And that's the end of y ahora van al siguiente nivel. We have time for one more donation. What does that load? Uh, we have a thirty-four dollar and thirty cent donation from Super Crash Bug. What up, AGDQ? I always love donating to this awesome cause every year, and I love it even more when I can do it during a Halo game speed run. It's awesome, thank you. So uh, Nightfall is by far the shortest level in this game. Usually takes around four este es el nivel más corto. At most. Uh, at the start, I don't know if you saw it too well, but Wolfie jumped off Pedro Gas's head just to skip like five seconds of walking. It's really lazy, but it works. <laughs> And Wolfie will be going for a grenade jump. Which Ahí Wolfie on legendary saltó really encima de Pedro para saltarse 5 segundos y evitar caminar. Because one grenade and that beam, that shot Pedro, will just kill you. Fortunately, he didn't get it. I think it's because he had the focus rifle, and if you take a little bit of damage and then a grenade, it would kill you. So I Ahí reiniciaron el punto de control porque el Jackal se puso en mala posición. This grenade jump, it's like a little bit of walking that it saves. But the, old, the alternative path, if you take that, there's a lot of enemies that can shoot you. And if you do the grenade jump on the roof, there's like one or two enemies that can shoot you. That's unfortunate again. That was close. So yeah, where Wolfie's going now. Got, got lucky. There was a little rifle, one shot ya at that would have killed him. Botiquín. Now, this is probably the toughest area in the level. Okay, esta which, es la parte you just want to shoot that elite and run on the turret. And pray you don't get shot. On co-op, it's easier because your teammate spawns on you, like halfway through running. So it's, it's almost guaranteed. If the enemies are really bad, then... Pero lo lograron pasar. Then you can both die. As with a tiger locator on the other level, these are gooters. These are the only time you see them. Again, not by choice. That they included them and then they forgot about them or something. Or they didn't like them. I don't know. Uh, what you see both of them do now is they'll be blowing themselves up. Which Ahora looks a bit weird. You know, I wonder why. But you see after one runs out of sprint, the other one would want to respawn because then you respawn a full sprint. Lo que pasa es que cada vez que aparece uno, aparece con la velocidad máxima para sprintar, para correr. Por eso cada vez que a uno se le acaba el sprintar, el otro se suicida y así van sucesivamente para que sigan avanzando corriendo. One important thing on this level is the thing they've just like kind of avoided and they skirted around. Se dan cuenta como cuando se le acaba el sprintar a uno se suicida. In Halo 1, there's the... Es para seguir corriendo, like, seguir corriendo. On the second level of Halo, where you can either save your Marines, or in the speeder and they kill them, it's quicker. It's kind of similar to that, where there's some Rebels there, and you can either save them and have a bunch of wave fighting, or you can fail it and let them die. So you just run past them, and that counts as you failing it. But it's a lot faster. Okay, what are doing now? Okay, I'm setting up for a checkpoint. Wolfie mentioned this in the interview, es este truco, I believe, just before the run. De armadura para the intentar pasar la parte. they've just picked up. El chiste es que obviamente the tienen que llegar al puente. A ver. And what it does is it makes like a... It squishes them. It makes like a sandwich, you know? So launch over the gaps. Están intentando así lanzarlo like con el bloqueo de armadura. A lot of time. That's the wrong way, guys. It doesn't save a lot of time, but it does look really cool. No salva mucho tiempo con esto, pero se ve bien, si es que lo logran. It's unfortunate again. Covenant structure. That's it. Let's... No! No, se cayó. Covenant structure. Ya casi, ya casi. No, he got it. No! Oh, rayos. I swear in practice, it was like every third or fourth try. Oh! Okay. So what just happened? Explain so, why was that gasp there. <laughs> so, Halo has a mechanic 
Lo que pasa es que si mueres demasiado después este... Si mueres demasiado en un punto de control, Halo te regresa a un punto de control anterior porque entonces considera que no puedes aparecer en ese y aquí por eso los regresó hasta esta parte del juego. Scorpion, I happen to fall through a hole right before a checkpoint. I just kept dying over and over and over again, and yeah. eventually sent me back to the previous checkpoint before that. So that, yeah, that, that has helped me. Okay. <laughs> It can help. It, <laughs> I don't think it was in classic Halo 1, but yeah, they've just had to retrace the steps. Thankfully, this is a really short mission where there's not any fighting like required, really. So it wasn't. A ver, vamos a ver si le sale de nuevo. Okay. No, ya se lo van a pasar bien. No, no les salió. Lo van a, lo van a pasar ya esta parte normal. Ya normal esta parte. Bueno, este truco yo creo que sí muchas personas lo conocen. Pones este el montacargas, el forklift, justo ahí donde está Pedro, y te saltas ya esa parte. So clipping through that gate, it saves a lot of fight, and there's going to be hunters, waves of enemies, just a whole. Al hacer eso te saltas todos estos enemigos y ya simplemente te vas corriendo. And because you clip through that gate, none of the enemies in this area respond. So it's just more than the end of the level. Which thankfully the trigger is loaded, so you can just hit the trigger without having to do much else. We have time for a couple more donations until the next level loads as well. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Bear Drax. Halo Reach Hype, I don't think I have to plasma repeater myself, but I think we all have the energy sword to gravity hammer the nail in the coffin of cancer. Oh no. Down with cancer and thank you AGDQ for being awesome. Okay, so I'll start in the I give it about a B. Yeah, that was a solid B. Uh, I enjoyed reading it. I feel good about this. So tip of despair, this is a very combat level. Lanza. The first thing you noticed Wolfie did was uh, jump off the edge. That's because you spawn with a DMR. Normally you spawn with a assault rifle and grenade launcher. But you want a DMR to help uh, kill the grunts in the shade turrets. Just, it's a lot easier than spamming grenades at them or going up to them. You also notice that Pedro uh, suicided to drop the grenade launcher. So now Wolfie has a DMR and grenade launcher. And Pedro has a assault rifle and DMR. Oh. Uh, right, this mission. There's two AA guns that you're meant to take out. This is the first one. Usually with the AA guns, you have to go inside the AA gun. There's a core, you throw a grenade or you shoot the core a lot. And then it blows up. Instead of doing that, because there's a lot of elites... Aquí en lugar de entrar a las armas antiaéreas y matarlos, you can use the, uh, pueden utilizar el lanzacuetes antiaéreo y destruir el arma antiaéreo. Porque si te vas y los intentas matar desde adentro, hay muchos elites que aparecen. And there's a ghost which doesn't often, but sometimes it will chase uh, Pedro because he stayed back. <coughs> and yeah, now that I've done that, there was a like a 10 second time save with the ghost. If you uh, drive over the bridge before the bridge got dropped, uh, it's kind of tricky. It's save 10 seconds. It just looks cool and it feels cool to get. Lleva 23 minutos y ya están aquí en la cuarta misión. Next part of the mission is the DXR mining facility. Those zealots from the first level, there's one of those in here. Ahora, como ven, en lugar de irse por el puente, se va por esta parte de la colina, lo mismo, para saltarse la parte de los enemigos. Literally, like six or seven shots from that will kill you. Legendary can be very punishing. What I'm doing, because I don't want to kill all the enemies, is you'll see that setting up a head jump. Ahí están intentando hacer ahora el truco del salto. Salto doble. That was close. And landing on this little ledge. There we go, second try. Ahí van. 
and on that ledge. Now he can just run past every enemy that's at the top. Se saltan that eso. Zealot Elite from the first mission is now going to spawn. Usually, if you make that jump, uh, you miss the trigger to spawn a Zealot. But because he fell, he's uh, had to lose like 10, 15 seconds, and there's the Zealot. Ahí está el Elite Zealot. Doesn't pose much of a threat if he doesn't look at you, I guess. <laughs> So that weapon Pedro's picked up, that was one introduced in Reach. It's called the uh, Plasma Launcher. And it's like a another grenade launcher, in the sense, where you charge it up, you shoot four plasma grenades, and they home onto the enemies. Which will be used soon, because there are two hunters. So this part, there's kind of a lot going on. But Pedro, he's going to get on this uh, chain gun wall. Y recuerdan lo de hace rato del Warthog con cohetes. Pues aquí hace lo mismo básicamente, pero con el Warthog normal. Dispararle a la torre tanto aérea del Covenant para así destruirla y no tener que entrar ahí. And Wolfie's just hijacks a Wraith. Which, uh, by getting in the turret, and the driver's like, oh, you can't be in my turret, like, that doesn't work. So then he gets out, and then you can just steal it. Which... I don't know why, he's not very smart. So yeah, there's three wraiths in this area. Sometimes they can drive off the edge. If they drive off the edge, you don't have to deal with them. If the one Wolfie has drove off the edge, then it would have to do this whole section without a vehicle. Because the vehicles that they came down with, the Revenant and the Ghost, aren't very effective. They could splatter enemies, but that's about it. And the chain gun Warhog uh, Pedro used, it's... Um, kind of damaged. It wouldn't last very long. One or two shots from the hunters would kill it. So Wolfie's got the Wraith to kill the hunters. Pedro has the plasma launcher I mentioned earlier. Aquí más que nada es optimizar y matar a los enemigos lo más rápido posible. That's the last hunter. That's the last nada enemy here, común. I think. That was a really good clear. That was a very good clear. muy efectivamente, ¿lo vieron? <laughs> Recuerden que están en legendario. Usually with that clear, there can be one enemy left alive. <laughs> there can be one enemy left alive, and then the uh, uh, the falcon will come down. But uh, the hunter was alive, and so was the phantom that dropped off some grunts. So because there was two enemies alive, just the phantom hadn't despawned yet, it still counted as two enemies, even though it was only one. So it, it was just it was just quick. So they had a uh, wait. <clears throat> With this Falcon Ride, it's uh, it's a bit of an auto scroller. But Aquí básicamente no hay nada que puedan hacer. Recuerden really, que really como van en el Falcon de so artilleros, no hay nada que puedan hacer. Like simplemente asegurarse de no morir. So un auto scroller uh, es una parte de un juego que no puedes hacer nada para poder like ir más rápido. One or two shots if that will kill you. Three shots if you're lucky. And if you look on Wolfie's screen as well. Some of the turrets, and right now, he's aiming at like nothing, but the reticle's red. You kind of have to know where the enemies spawn, or else uh, you just die to them, and you need to get punished. And if one person dies to them, there's the enemies on their side, but they won't shoot at the person that's on the other side left alive. So yeah, they're gonna fly into the spire now. We have time for one donation, because there's not much going else on. Going else? Yeah, we actually had some puns from uh, Super Crash Bug. Oh, lovely. Let's hope this combat against cancer is evolved and we win the wars. <laughs> it's not a reach to say that the money we will raise is infinite. ODST. Esperemos que el combate contra el cancer haya evolucionado y que este donativo sea infinito. ¿Entienden las referencias? ¿Entienden las referencias? So their Falcon, oh, it crashed. That giant shield EMP'd it. Oh, pilot's dead. They're the only ones alive. Surprise, surprise. What they're going to do is they need to go to the top of the spire to deactivate that shield that just EMP'd them so their friends can fly in and pick them up pretty much. So there's a lot of enemies here. There's a lot of snipers. Thankfully, they didn't get shot by them a lot. A ver, it's very ahora van a este vehículo. Lograron pasar sin problemas. Ahora van aquí a la parte de arriba de la torre. That makes this bit tougher. Because there's three wide elites up here. Wide elites are um, they're pretty tough. Like the weakest one's blue. 
Then it's orange, I think, and then it's white. So that white elite that Wolfie killed had a concussion rifle. Ah. Oh, yeah, two of them have concussion rifles. That's really unlucky. That's because the banshee. Ah, no, they grab it solamente a jugar Halo Reach. Because they didn't get a checkpoint. One thing we probably should mention is checkpoints in Halo. They're already punishing enough because you can't be moving or you can be walking, but you can't be like jumping. You can't be in combat, and that's what you need to do to get a checkpoint. Assuming there's one like that you can trigger, or if you've waited long enough, some of them are on a timer. But on co-op, both players need to be safe, and if one person's dead, you can't get a checkpoint. So it can be a, it can be tough. It can be punishing. If one person's dead, then no checkpoint. So yeah, at the top. Wolfie's gonna go to the side. Ahora lo van a intentar de nuevo. Pedro's gonna get the sword elite, hopefully. Ahí no logró matar al de la espada. His melee lunge, like really weird. When they do like a weird uh, walking animation, or at least it seems like if they do like some weird walking animation. Ahí vieron ese, nice. ese truco, saltó sobre él y lo mató por la espalda. Y terminaron el nivel. That's tip of the spear. That's the fourth level done. <coughs> Déjenles rico cuál es el mejor del tiempo. There's five levels left, and this next one's by far the longest. Appropriately, it's called a uh, long night of solace. Part of the reason it's the longest is because it has uh, four minutes and 18 seconds of uncertainty. Okay, miren el tiempo récord mundial de Halo Reach en legendario en solo es de una hora 34 minutos con 24 segundos. Y lo tiene Wolfie, precisamente el jugador de la izquierda, el de lentes. El tiempo récord mundial de Halo Reach en fácil lo tiene el de la derecha, Pedro Gas, que ese es una hora 13 minutos con 18 segundos. Y en cooperativo, Halo Reach en legendario lo tienen ellos dos, una hora 26 minutos con 52 segundos. Y en fácil también lo tienen ellos, una hora 9 minutos 56 segundos. O sea, estamos viendo a los mejores jugadores de Halo Reach que hay en el mundo en la campaña. Al primer y segundo lugar, literalmente, de Halo Reach a nivel mundial. Si sí, estos son speedruns. Estamos viendo primer y segundo lugar a nivel mundial. And headshot him basically instantly. That wasn't instant. That might be. Yes, yeah, that's good enough. So that skips a lot of fighting. That skips really hard to do on legendary, even on co op. It saves like a, a minute or so of fighting, or like 40 seconds maybe. It's, it's worth going for, like all the time. So we're coming up to our uh, second favorite cutscene in the game. <laughs> Cicada, steal your assassination. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're coming up to our second favorite cutscene. Me sorprende que tan rápido se pasaron lo de la playa. No me tomo un montón pasarme lo de la playa. Unskippable cutscene. It's about a minute and a half. So we have uh, plenty of time for donations while this cutscene plays on. All right, and they're definitely coming in. So we have $125 from Pro Ace Joker. Hey yo, boys, Wolfie, I miss you, man. Glad to see you and Pedrogas running, uh, destroying Reach like always. You've both been incredible runners for so long and stay true to Reach runs for even longer. Keep HaloRuns.com alive, my friends. You both deserve this main stage presence and no doubt you'll make literally zero mistakes, right? <laughs> uh, we also have $25 from Failed Gamer. Halo everyone, Halo everyone at AGDQ. I didn't even see that one at first. Uh, had to donate during one of my favorite games, Halo Reach. Big up to all of the runners and staff for putting on another great event. Let's reach that total. <laughs> um, we have $10 from Kiba saying, Halo is the game that got me into gaming, so I had to donate here. Also, Reach is the best Halo ever of all time. Reach is the best Halo ever. I see, I see. Um, we have $15 from Ninjara. Longtime watcher and donator here. So excited to be watching this event again. I'd love to see everyone come together to play great games for a great cause. I will donate another $25 if I can get the audience to give a big round of applause to the people behind the scenes, working tech support, and everything else. They've worked so hard to give us this fantastic event. And they are awesome. They are awesome people, guys.
Así es, Diego, es donde más se pueden tardar en el espacio. Oh. And do I have time for one more? Yeah, you can squeeze one more in. All right. Thirty dollars from Fate of Reality. Halo Reach was the first game my parents pre-ordered for me and my brother. It's my favorite Halo game and one of my favorite games of all time. Glad to see this game get speedrun at GDQ, and I love everything that GDQ does to support charities. Together, we can defeat cancer and many more issues together. Uh, can you name at least ten different helmet types in Halo Reach? Because you'll donate ten more dollars if you can do that. Oh wow. Okay. You look at me? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, recon is one, isn't it? You got Recon, you got Mark 5B, okay. you got Mark 5, Mark 6. EOD is one. EOD, EVA. Are we counting EVAC, which is the meals helmet? I'll count it. <laughs> <laughs> CQB, um, Gunganer. Ahí están tratando de decir todos los cascos que hay en Halo Reach. Y los dijo bien, todos los cascos de Reach. Mark 5B, Mark 6. Piloto, so, this is Eva, the Eva C, Granadero, Gongir, so EOD. Until the next sí, cutscene, our favorite cutscene, which is the two minute one, um, there's three waves of enemies. The first wave is all banshees, pues and bueno. they're split into two groups. <laughs> Aquí como ven están en posiciones exactas donde aparecen los Banshees Porque el chiste es poder eliminarlos lo más rápido que se pueda Tienen que estar en estas posiciones exactas para que cuando sea el momento que aparecen los Banshees No tengan oportunidad de huir Porque si se les va un solo Banshee ya les cuesta bastante tiempo Ahí casi chocan ellos You can hit them, or you can kill them with a machine gun. It just takes a very long time. So, y ahora van contra los Zeraps. So, are they completely immune to the missiles with their shields? Yes. Aquí recuerden que los Zeraps son inmunes a los misiles, a menos que les destruyas los escudos con la torreta. This is not a very good second wave. They keep dodging their missiles. So yeah, they're just gonna use the machine gun on that one. Oh no. Hasta ahora van bien. Algo que es factor importante para los juegos, este, pasarlos, este, bien, es el RNG. RNG es Random Number Generator, que es lo que te puede tocar aleatorio. O sea, no siempre te va a tocar lo mismo en un juego. Tienes que por eso adaptarte. Wolfie como ven se está yendo directo contra los Banshees y Pedro se está yendo contra los Seraphs. Como están jugando en cooperativo es por eso que así se dividen para poder dividir las tareas y acabar lo más rápido posible. Ok, es bueno que se haya tocado a los Phantoms luego luego, significa que están yendo rápido. Pero tienen que tener cuidado porque andan muy bajos de salud los dos. Una vez que maten a los Phantoms, todos los enemigos que queden se van a retirar. No importa quiénes queden. Es así como está diseñado el juego. Así que cuando ustedes lo jueguen en Legendario, maten primero a los Phantoms y así van a retroceder los demás. En general les fue bien. ¿Ya vieron el easter egg? 117. Ok, yo no sabía que estaba ese easter egg. Vean la estación espacial. 117, ya lo vieron. Yo no sabía de ese easter, de ese easter egg del 117. ¿Y ustedes? Yo no sabía eso, yo no sabía eso. Ok, primera vez que me entero. Son tan pros porque juegan una y otra y otra y otra vez. O sea, repetir, repetir, repetir. Ok, 
Here to wish you the best for the co-op run. I'm still a little hurt about the window jump, but it's all in the name of speed, so I can't be too upset. Good luck to Pedro and Wolfie, and some extra good luck to my boy Jangoost on the couch. <laughs> we have $50 from Brew Chimang. Uh, shout out to this great event, the runners, and, and everyone else supporting such an awesome cause. Keep up the good work. Uh, $20 from TN Dom saying, My wife and I spotted Halo Reach on the schedule at the start of GDQ and couldn't wait to see this run. We've got the pizza in and wish Wolfie and Pedrogas all the best with their run. Uh, Not Brad donated $5 saying, Noble Six is still alive on Reach in a Cave. Also, obligatory HaloRuns.com plug. Oh yeah, HaloRuns.com. Did somebody say HaloRuns.com? I think somebody said HaloRuns.com. Miren, si quieren saber... Was that Halo... I think that was HaloRuns.com. Dot com. Okay. And we have $50 from El Gavino. First time donating during my favorite Halo game. I'm finally financially stable enough to donate to a good cause. So hopefully this earns me my Halo. Sorry, that was a bit of a reach. I think I heard a groan from the audience, and I have headphones on. <laughs> So one funny thing about this cutscene and checkpoints was uh, usually you get checkpoints after cutscenes, but there's one runner, uh, Halo dude, when he was playing this level, I believe it was an Algo game chistoso game. de esta cinemática, de esta parte del nivel. His flew straight into his AI teammates, flew into him immediately, killed es que... him. And he had to watch that two Hubo un jugador game. una vez, <laughs> usualmente <laughs> en Halo. Después de una cinemática te dan un punto de control, un checkpoint. Pero una vez ocurrió de un jugador que estaba jugando que una de las naves este, aliadas chocó directo contra él, lo mató y no le dieron un punto de control y tuvo que regresar hasta la parte de atrás, antes de la cinemática. And then you'll go for the Seraphs and the Banshees that escaped, and then you'll take out the rest of the engines. But in the name of speed, and because they're actually pretty good players, they take out the engines immediately. So they have all the enemies from like the start and all the reinforcements that came in. But there's only four people que le haya pasado eso. So the uh, UNSC Savannah, the giant gray ship flowing, he is, uh, is friendly. His guns, they help. But what helps more is just him being there. Because the, like, he rotates around the Corvette. And one thing the enemies don't seem to notice is like where he is. So a lot of the time they just fly into him and immediately explode. <laughs> that was a really good second space fight as well. There are turrets on that Corvette which hurt and they just don't die. Gracias, este, well. Jesús para por la donación. So it's good avoiding those. Para mí el Halo más difícil es Halo 2 en legendario. Para mí es el Halo más difícil que hay. They've landed, they have the weapons they had at the start because none of them died, which is very important. And there's six of these elites in here. The jetpack elites. And the Pedro's got three. Ok, qué rápido mataron a esos elites del centro. Esto ya es la práctica que tienen estos dos jugadores. Saber dónde están, llegar rápido y matarlos. ¿Se dan cuenta? And then they'll have a Wolfie, will have the Plasm Fistful and Sniper. And Pedro have the Plasm Fistful and Needle Rifle. And the Needle Rifle we haven't seen this run. It's similar to the DMR. It's the Covenant's DMR. But arguably better in a sense. It's weaker. But it has more bullets in the magazine. And if you shoot three shots at an Ok, pues bueno, las diferencias del DMR al Reflag y Juan Covenant. El DMR es más fuerte, pero tienes menos munición en el cargador. Y el Rift Aguijón es más débil, pero tres disparos y explota el enemigo y tienes más munición. ¿Ustedes qué prefieren, DMR o Rift Aguijón entonces? Aquí básicamente es lo mismo, o sea, matar a los enemigos rápidamente. And uh, drop off a bomb. So there's one enemy left. Pedro is going to go for the button. So that's one thing that like makes co-op a fair bit faster than solo, is they can split up and do certain things. Like on the second level when Wolfie went and. Uh, Aquí es lo de la ventaja están comentando de jugarlo en cooperativo, que como son dos personas jugando se pueden dividir las tareas y jugar más rápido el juego. 
that's where like a fair amount of the time save in this run comes from. So I know I said that Lenin Oil was arguably better, but they both juggled DMRs to the big door at the front. Because in this level there's a lot of back. Gracias Perras por renovar el patrocinio. Bienvenido. There'll be a room cleared up. They have to come back because their teammates aren't doing so good. Those two elites, they're just busy, like blasting away the cannons. They're distracted, so they just die in the back. One hit in the back. And this room is RNG, which is really bad on. Y ahora este cuarto nos están comentando que es muy aleatorio lo que pueda ocurrir. But it's not bad either. O sea, depende mucho de la posición donde aparezcan los enemigos. Tienen que asegurarse de que nada los vea. Uy, el elite, el elite general, el elite general, el elite general, los elite generales. So Wolfie got uh, stabbed. That elite with a sword, one hit kill. There's a couple grunts alive. There's that sword elite still, but he's he's gone. Okay, lo, lo supieron recuperar bien. Up, uh, just to spawn Wolfie, because that sword elite. Lo supieron recuperar. You know, if the worst came to worst and that killed him, that's that's a revert, and it's just a lot safer to spawn the teammate in. And uh, lose a tiny bit of time, then risk losing a lot of time. So Pedro's just ran ahead and left Wolfie, but Wolfie just teleport to him, no problem. If uh, if one room is deloaded and someone's in that room, then they'll teleport. Aquí hacen esto para que se desaparezcan las oleadas de enemigos que aparecen. Por eso uno se queda más atrás que el otro. Ayuda a que aparezcan menos enemigos. Se llama un truco de load. So this is the end of a long night of Solus, and there's a lot of enemies that come out of doors, but they're always the same doors. Ok, y ahora se están posicionando para eliminar a los enemigos que aparezcan. ¿Lo ven? ¿Vieron eso que hizo con el lanzagranadas de plasma y la granada de fragmentación? Es eso, es coordinarte. Es que te aprendas ya la posición de los enemigos donde van a aparecer. Llevan 46 minutos con 53 segundos. Y vean en qué nivel ya van. En legendario están jugando. Se saben esos trucos porque, pues, imagínate que juega es un juego mil veces, te aprendes ya las cosas. Y también este, como muchas personas es una comunidad grande que lo juega, pues muchas personas descubren cosas y ya pasan la información. No sabía que te podías subir a la torreta de ese pelican. Estamos aprendiendo hoy muchas cosas nuevas y descanse en paz, Jorge. Un F por Jorge. Sí, F. F por Jorge. Que hasta ni su cinemática mostraron. Gracias, Manuel Lobo, por la donación de 50 pesos. Gracias, amigo. Bienvenido al stream y gracias por tu donativo. Y si exacto, practican los trucos. Algo interesante de esta parte es que con cada elite que con cada elite este nivel no tiene elites es todo menos elites muchos brutes muchos brutes y algo que los brutes no tienen escudo recuerdan lo del escudo And unshielded enemies, it kills really quick. So the needle rifle is six shots. Serán eliminados muy rápidos por el rifle aguijón. Also, them jumping like that wasn't for fun. That kills every grunt. Every grunt in this beginning section is a suicide grunt. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. So some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping over that gap blows them all up. Some reason. Jumping Ok, lo ven, eso ya es aprenderte exactamente cuántos disparos toma para que exploten los enemigos. El aijoneador es tu mejor amigo en este nivel, es lo que están diciendo. 
Siempre hay cuatro grunts ahí Pero pues la posición donde aparecen No siempre es la misma Pero que siempre hay por lo menos uno Ahí Pedro murió It's in matchmaking as well, which is why a lot of people don't like this game. When it's used, you're completely invincible. You can't move, but you're invincible. And every brute, if they seen like needlers or a grenade, they can just armor lock and then you have to wait. So they're killing every enemy, because um, every enemy except one can be alive. What they're gonna do. And you'll see Pedro's gonna press an elevator button. No, it's okay, not. Okay, ahí Wolf va el del elevador. Button. Vieron que lo activó el elevador a través de la pared, literalmente. El 90% de las veces los enemigos desaparecen ahí. And there's two phantoms dropping off enemies, and they're each going to deal with one phantom. Cada uno se va a enfrentar a un Phantom solo. Aquí el problema con la torreta de los Phantom es que te mata en dos tiros en legendario. Gracias, soldado, igual por la donación. Muchas gracias. F para Jorge. Yeah. Indy. So every enemy except one who died again. Wolfie, what are you doing? Ah, oh, okay. Vieron ese truco. Saltó afuera del edificio, saltó al precipicio, pero los teletransportó el, el elevador que había activado el otro jugador. Y ahora intentar hacer otro truco. There's a trick in Halo 3 called box launching, where if you walk up to a box with a gravity hammer and swing the hammer, you just fly. You like launch the box into yourself and fly. So when is it true that I don't They're possible in reach, but they're just really, really hard. Like, you can sit there for like 20 minutes and get like one launch. <laughs> Got stuck on each other. Um, Pedro stole a rocket launcher from the Marine. Okay. And he can either get three or four shots in it. So he's got three, which is, you know, the worst. Pues aquí esto es Ideally, normal. Ideally, he would have four. Three is not bad. There is another rocket launcher coming up. This is also the first time in a game you see the jetpack. So what you would want to do is... Miren por donde se están yendo exactamente. Jetpack across... Van aquí like, justo en la ladera del edificio. To go to a bunch of enemies and fight these enemies. But one thing they... Se dan cuenta por dónde están atravesando el mapa. Tienen que hacer esta ruta. Porque en esta área en particular y en el nivel general. Si se pierden una de los triggers que activan algo del nivel. El juego se crashearía. Por eso tienen que ir por lugares en específico para que se aparezcan enemigos. Pero se dan cuenta cuántos brutes se pasaron ahí, al ir por allá abajo. Ahora ya les falta un lanzacuetes, eso es malo. Ahora aquí es eliminar a los enemigos. Ahí tienen que tener cuidado con el caudillo brut, ese de ahí. 
a plasma pistol to EMP him. Okay. Lo eliminaron y ahora viene really un Brute Capitán con martillo, pero ese no hay problema. Yo también, Manuel Lobo. Una hora 26 minutos es el tiempo récord del bicho. So you want to have the DMR so you can just headshot the grunts out of them, which blows up the shade turrets. And if you like kill the shade turret or kill the grunt and then get in the shade turret, the shade turret just explodes and immediately kills you as well. Bungie just really didn't want you getting in those shade turrets. And now here's some falcons which we're not going to fly in like the first level. But we're going to get in the side seat with the turrets. This is a three minute auto scroller. Esta parte también es un autoscroller, recuerden, autoscroller es una parte del juego que no importa lo que hagas, no puedes modificar la velocidad de esta parte, o sea, aquí no hay nada más que puedas hacer para hacer más rápido el juego. Uh, we have $250 from Colonel Burke. I always love Halo speedruns during GDQ. Looking forward to a great run. Rest in peace, George. Rest in peace, George. Uh, $100 from Shale. This is one weird episode of Red vs. Blue. $20 from Project Duckus. Halo Reach is one of my favorite games. How did I never see 117? Good luck from the UK, UK to all runners and let's kick cancer's butt. Uh, Jay Arias donated $50 saying just ran this game and the other Halos for Extra Life November and used Wolfie and Pedroga's videos to learn Reach. Good luck on the run, guys. Uh, we have some follow-up donations. Uh, $15 from Fate of Reality. Here's $15 for mentioning Gunganeer because that is one of my favorite helmets. Or, or ARG. I am a terribly, I'm sorry. Ok, bueno, recordemos que estamos viendo un speedrun de Halo Reach en cooperativo en dificultad legendaria del evento Awesome Games on Quick 2019. Este es un evento de speedruns. Durante una semana entera, las 24 horas al día, se juegan distintos videojuegos de todas las consolas, de todas las épocas, todas las plataformas y se juntan donaciones para la caridad. En esta ocasión se está beneficiando a la Sociedad de Prevención del Cáncer, cuyo objetivo, que es una organización sin fines de lucro, objetivo es combatir el cáncer previniendo que le dé a las personas. Esto es lo que estamos viendo ahorita, y estamos viendo al jugador Wolfie, que es el que vemos en la pantalla izquierda, y al jugador Pedrogas de la pantalla derecha, quienes son el número uno y el número dos jugadores de Halo Reach en el mundo. Son los mejores jugadores de Halo Reach en el mundo en campaña. Eso es lo que estamos viendo ahorita. Eso estamos viendo ahorita. So they didn't die, that's the main thing, that's the main goal. It's kind of hard to die. You can get like, there are like videos Gracias, of people Bienvenido that were like one of the and then a bit of the Banshee gets stuck in their Falcon, and that just weighs it down slowly and slowly into the water and just kills them like that. Um, one thing we're gonna hopefully pray for is a checkpoint immediately, so if something bad happens, we don't have to watch that again. Wolfie unfortunately got stuck in the Falcon for like five seconds. That's all right. Um, it just happens. Like we Ahí no les dio punto de control. On solo, in the seat Pedro was in. Gracias, Lombard Gore, 76, 150. Uh, and take his seat. Bienvenido. Pretty mean thing to do. Oh, it's, it's the warm seat. I know. <laughs> Can't fold him. So, También algo interesante es que Pedrogas, el jugador es mexicano. Tiene 22 años. Pedro va a presionar dos de ellos. Hemos presionado uno ya. Y ese Wraith es un poco scary. Y él va a... Espero que no se haya matado. El Wraith está chasando a él. Aquí van a tener mucho cuidado ya que no tuvieron un punto de control. Tienen que tener mucho cuidado de no morir los dos. Porque si no van a tener que volver a todo lo del Falcon atrás. Presiona el último botón. Presiona el último botón. Y eso es todo. Eso fue un really sólido éxito. Ok, les fue muy bien. Y recuerden, están jugando en dificultad legendaria. 
The good Nana Marathon is really good so far. New Alexand oh, going off a uh, good level to one of the worst, New Alexandria. This level can take eight minutes. Este nivel um, puede tomar ocho and minutos. if you play like just as good, but you get unlucky, it can take like 15. This ok, este nivel RNG. es un, una tirada de suerte. El nivel puede so tardar 8 really minutos RNG en él. So y si juegas muy bien, incluso también, si te toca mala suerte, puede tardar 15 minutos. O sea, depende de los objetivos que te toquen. Recordemos que el objetivo de un speedrun es pasarte el juego lo más rápido posible. Todo esto con trucos, glitches, optimizaciones de juego, o jugando simplemente muy, muy bien. It's kind of unlucky to get that. If you get that's also really unfortunate to have. Ahí van a tener que regresar el punto de control porque murió Wolfie. Okay, Wolfie is going for a Banshee now. If he can get the Falcon out. Having a Banshee to go through this area, even if there's not one that's spawned nearby, it's it's unfortunate it hasn't spawned nearby, but it's uh, still most likely Veamos cuánto les toma la misión. Be faster. It's just finding one. This level is huge. This is by far, um, apart from like the space section on Aparte de la sesión, sección espacial, este es uno de los más grandes niveles del juego, es lo que nos están comentando. Oh, ah, y ahí casi lo hace. Gracias, Lombardor, por la donación de 50 pesotes. Gracias. You know just how like tough it can be. And without, um, there's like three or four Banshee spawns we like to go for. Ahí está intentando llevarse el Banshee. That's unlucky, is it? Yeah, there's like three or four Banshee spawns we like to go for, and if we can get one of those, because they always fly in like the same general path. Es difícil, um, es difícil, it's, como ven. it's hard to like improvise and uh, get the ban like get any Banshee. So they got really good luck. Exacto, Manuel Lobo, es el timing de todas las cosas. But they've got really bad luck because they didn't get a Banshee spawn. He got back in. Aquí está intentando secuestrar el Banshee para ayudarle más fácil a pasar el nivel. La razón por la cual Pedro no va por el Banshee es porque Pedro tiene un Banshee con lanzagranadas, un Falcon con lanzagranadas y Wolfie tiene uno de torreta, normal. Por eso es que no, no va él. El Banshee es para pasarte más fácil a los enemigos, para matarlos más fácil. Además de tener el Falcon más fuerte, Pedro tiene un Marine y eso te ayuda pues, a tener un disparo extra. Ah, Juan Anquilador Gamer YouTube, te and paso el link. Este es el link directo para los que quieran ver el stream de manera directa y para los que quieran también mandar sus donativos al evento, al maratón. Ahí te lo puse, Juan Aniquilador. Están en Twitch. Ok, ya le salió, ya le salió. Like someone as good as Wolfie who spent days, like a month. I think like reach tracks. Ahora ven, ahora van a ver la parte de lo del Banshee. Uh, campaign playtime is like fifty something days. Ahí va. Which is a lot. I don't know what Pedro has, but his is uh, a couple months as well. And I know I have uh, 32 days. I Ahí believe. los jugadores están comentando que cómo tienen cada uno 30, 50, hasta 80 días de juego en Halo Reach. ¿Ustedes se imaginan 80 días de juego en Halo Reach? Días, días estoy diciendo. Ese va a suceder para parecer que en Pedro. 
Así que en lugar de salir, pues simplemente se suicida y ya aparece con su compañero que está fuera del edificio. Aquí hay una probabilidad de 1 en 3 en que te toque el objetivo que quieras para pasarlo más rápido. Recuerden, aquí es aleatorio lo que te toque de objetivos. Se dieron cuenta que mataron a los Marines en lugar de matar a los Hunters. Esto es porque es más rápido matar a los Marines que a los Hunters. Aquí dirás, ¿pero por qué los están traicionando? Porque el objetivo es ir rápido. Si los matas rápido, esto es ya objetivo fallado, no importa, sigue a lo que sigue. Ok, ahora van a al centro nocturno. Ok, ahí van. Ahí no importa que muera ante los Hunters, porque el objetivo está completado y ya aparece con su compañero. Ya no tiene que hacer todo el proceso de matar a los enemigos y salir corriendo. Se dan cuenta cómo lo están pasando súper rápido. Y que ahora les toca la misión de evacuación. Destruir la batería antiaérea. Pero no es la peor. La peor es si jugaste ODST, ¿sabes un character en ese juego llamado Buck? Dice que aquí odian a Bok A todos les encanta Bok como personaje Pero si te toca a Bok aquí Su misión de escorta Y como todos los juegos Las misiones de escolta son bastante tediosas Y aquí pierdes tiempo Así que aquí si te toca Bok de misión, entonces es malo porque vas a perder tiempo. Es lo que nos están comentando en este momento. Esta es la segunda parte final del nivel. Ahora va a la torre de mapa del multijugador. Que se llama Hotel Sancio, creo. Creo, sí. Ahora Wolfie se llevó el Falcon ahí y lo abandonó y llegó a la parte final del nivel para que así cuando Pedro ya active esto del final, de nuevo, se suicide y aparezca ya con su compañero y entonces ya están ahí listos en la parte del final. Ya no tiene que salir, ya no tiene que enfrentarse a los drones, simplemente aparece con su aliado. Es por eso que el lanzagranadas es muy bueno para que puedas eliminar rápidamente a estos enemigos, incluso antes de que aparezcan. Lo cual no podrías hacer con el Falcon normal. Entonces estás aquí eliminando a los Phantoms antes de que pongan las torretas antiaéreas. Este si lo matan muy rápido Hay una probabilidad De que haya algo de diálogo que te digan Por eso tienes que esperar a que el último Si lo pongan y ya después lo vas a matarlo Adiós. 
One interesting thing about the Falcon is if you're in the side seats, you don't. Ahí está, misión completada. And that's New that's one of the most RNG levels. Uno de los niveles más aleatorios de toda la campaña de Halo. Reach. Time for a donation. Oh, this level's loading again. Oh, this one's this one's hot. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. We have twenty-five dollars from MC117. Seeing people master this game is a chief highlight of my day. I've been watching them beat a single game, but it's like they've already won 17. I'd feel guilty if this didn't spark a donation. Hey, low times are better. Thanks, guys. F for cat, cierto. F for cat. That's an A plus. That's an A plus plus. Right there. Oh wow. So this is the package. F for cat, cierto. And it's the last two levels that are generally agreed to be the hardest, just because they're the most combat heavy. Ahora este es uno de los niveles más difíciles del juego, simplemente porque es de los niveles que requiere más combate de los jugadores. If he's if you're unlucky, he does. They needed to take him out, or else he would have followed. He usually just sits back. And this is the tank, Scorpion tank, which is the only time you see in the campaign, unfortunately. It's a really good vehicle, and we take the tank instead of uh, Pedro beginning a revenant, which we saw on Tip of the Spear. Not for long, but we saw it. Uh, just okay, ahora cada uno se va a dividir. Faster, Pedro va al revenant, Wolf se queda en el Scorpion. Because one big advantage the revenant has over the Ghost, which is the uh, purple vehicle he was just in, is the revenant's way more protected. There's a lot more armor on it. It can live a lot more, and it usually doesn't flip as easy. <laughs> Yeah, and as we um the AA guns that we saw on tip of the spear again, there's two more. Wolfie has a tank. It takes seven shots to kill it. Okay, y de nuevo recuerda lo de la estrategia de la misión punta de lanza. En lugar de meterte a destruir las armas antiaéreas por dentro, simplemente les disparas con el escorpión y ya van a morir. Where he landed, he was home free. No enemies down there where he landed. That's unlucky. So. You would have saw the inside of an AA gun, but that was a really unfortunate EMP to get. So Paige is going to go back for the Revenant because that's kind of. It just makes a lot safer. Ya que es necesario para una siguiente parte del nivel. So Wolfie needs to remember not to blow up the turret, the tower, with the grunts on. That's why he's waiting. Paige is going to DMR these grunts. Ahí elimina los grunts. Porque tienen estos, recuerden, armas antivehículos. Tienen el cañón de combustible. Te lo destruyen inmediatamente en legendario. Pero no quiere destruir aquí para tomar el arma y que le sirva más adelante. Es más seguro simplemente con el DMR eliminar a los Grunts que se va a hacer más rápido eso. En lugar de destruir toda la plataforma y que qué tal si ya desaparecen las armas. O están lejos y pierdes tiempo. Aquí recuerden, el chiste es hacer todo lo que se pueda para pasarlo rápido. Cada segundo cuenta. No. Eso fue inoportuno. Y ahora, para esto, es la parte de lo del Revenant. Pero es más importante que el Ghost. Porque así entonces los dos pueden avanzar sin problemas. ¿Se dieron cuenta? ¡Qué buena granada! So Pedro's gonna throw some careful grenades to kill the enemies at top, while Wolfie just ran all the way up top and skipped everything. He has to be careful of a couple of enemies around. Yeah, get this girl on this jackal. And a couple of jackals left in now. Okay. So one of the enemies that spawned in there had a the Covenant sniper rifle, the focus rifle, and a shot from that, assuming it like all hits you. So it's like a giant beam. If that all hits you, that's, that's it, you're dead, and then you have to go up again. So Pedro teleports on him again, and Pedro's gonna go for a really tricky jump. Off that Ahora va a intentar un truco muy difícil. Pedro va a intentarlo de nuevo. Because he has the Fjord gun. Um, in case they can't get this jump... Yeah, I don't think they can get this jump. 
tienen que hacer ese salto, es muy difícil. Hola Ricardo, ¿qué hubo? Bienvenido al stream. They're gonna try, um, oh, no, okay. This is gonna be weird, because now there's no Fjord gun. So Esto va a ser algo complicado ya que perdieron el... El... Lanzador de combustible, el cañón de combustible. Esto se les va a complicar un poco más ahora. And we do have a Spartan laser, which is a giant laser. You charge it for a bit, and it's a death ray. We only have four shots of that, and there's four rockets. So having those fuel rods um, means that we can kill more phantoms. So we're not going to be able to kill as many phantoms. So this giant ice cave, not only does it look really pretty, but it is one of the harder areas. It's 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 one of the harder areas. Wolfie's got a grenade launcher, which can EMP, which he's going to use to his advantage. The Banshee's kind of high up, he's going to loop down. The the I would have thought. Okay, pues aquí van a esta parte. Okay. If, until Wolfie can get a Banshee, he's going to have to be on foot, which is really unlucky. Like, 99% aquí el objetivo of the time, es que el otro consiga un Banshee, like, porque es charging. obviamente mucho mejor para pasarse and, la misión. Um, then you can take them both. So, in like, this is a run killer. If you don't get any Banshees, especially on solo, if you don't get any Banshees... Uh oh Wow. <laughs> Eso fue bastante malo. Por eso tuvieron que volver al último punto de yeah. control. So solo, if you get no Banshees, if they decide to fly away... Si no te tocan Banshees en solitario, básicamente pierdes ya el juego. Wolfie got it. Aquí ya tiene el Banshee okay, el otro. Great. That was needed. Fue necesario para que puedan pasar rápido esta parte y sobre todo más fácil porque okay. si no se les complicaría mucho. Banshees. I don't know if I've touched it. Banshees have two weapons. They have their main cannons and then they have a giant banshee bomb, which is like a furot gun. It's a bit more stronger, I believe, but they use it to blow the phantoms. So Wolfie's gonna like damage okay. it. Okay, pues aquí están básicamente eliminando rápidamente a los a los ban a los phantoms para que ni siquiera aparezcan en sí los este es this whole wave fight area the next wave only comes in once all the para que enemies ni siquiera aparezcan are dead and the phantoms count as enemies so there's three phantoms in this wave there's three phantoms in every wave and they all have to fly back out so by blowing them up it just saves the time of them flying back out which it doesn't sound like a lot but it can be like 20 seconds like per wave unfortunately because Pedro doesn't have a fuel rod they're gonna have to kill it with uh, the Banshee hopefully the Banshee bomb it give it one last try yeah perfect so a lot of it is just mopping up killing the enemies that have got off the one la the one phantom that lived uh, killing the enemies that drops off that. And there's a Wraith that Wolfie's going for right now. This Wraith is very important. So Wolfie's going to ditch his Banshee. He didn't have it for long, but it was definitely essential. And he's going to blow off the top okay. of the, the hood of the Wraith. Aquí quitándole la tapa al Wraith para matar rápidamente. No, Eli not like that. You shoot him. Try again. Yeah, okay. Shoot with your fist, that's fine. <laughs> so there's three phantoms in this wave again, and Wolfie's gonna take out uh, two of them. No, you're not going to. One that drops off right next to him, and it's gonna be one that drops off where the other one that own, uh, Pedro only barely blew up. Wolfie's gonna snipe the AA gun, uh, the AA gun, the Wraith gun, to where that phantom lands, and it's six phantoms, uh, six Wraith shots, sorry. To blow up the phantom. So he saw the phantom flying down, so he's gonna kill it. But while he's doing that, Pedro, he's uh that phantom in specific okay. has two ghosts on it. Ahora, en and if you kill haciendo, one of the ghost drivers, si matas a uno de los there'll be de los a bunch of jet phantom that spawn um on the little bridge near Wolfie. Ahí casi so muere. The first phantom, he's gonna get this phantom easy. Y ahí lo lograron eliminar fácilmente. 
Now you might like it's weird. Like, why would he kill the ghost driver to spawn some more enemies? But with those enemies, because uh, they have jetpacks, usually they come out of uh, the phantom that had the ghosts on. Ahí they'll drop down murió. and they'll fly away immediately. But spawning them there? No idea. No one knows where they spawn there, by the way. Um, but spawning them, as the killing the ghost driver and spawning them, they don't move. Uh, Wolfie's stuck. That elite probably helped you out. <laughs> Just kicks you, gave you a nudge. Yeah, by spawning them, those elites don't move. So, oh, <laughs> that's a couple times now. So, um, Pedro's gonna get health because of uh, unforeseen circumstance and take the mongoose because he unfortunately died. It's not too much of a problem because Wolfie had a banshee, which he has since just perdieron the banshee. Recuerdan que era importante lo de tener el banshee para poder pasarse la misión. Because Wolfie's gonna stay in a rife for the rest of this level. So yeah, Pedro will just take the banshee. Now this is a wave that you only get on legendary and on co-op. So this is like a, a bonus wave kinda, if you want to put it like that. So Wolfie's gonna shoot this phantom to stop these enemies coming down. And blow that up. And this is a kinda tricky lineup, but he's gonna snipe another phantom right Ahí va a ser como francotirador contra otro phantom. Just Presten okay. atención con el So they're gonna have to adjust break. for that. But he's gonna blow up that phantom. So then that one. I'm always worried that Wolfie's gonna shoot Pedro when he's just flying around him. Obviamente tienen que tener cuidado con los disparos del phantom y que no le dé a su compañero. Doesn't look like he uh, had too much luck with that, unluckily. So just killing that phantom, it would save like a bit of time. Oh, he got it. Lo okay. logró. Nice. Bien, lo logró con el break. Es muy difícil lograr ese tiro. Gracias Lombard Girl por los 50 pesos. Y no, al rato no voy a hacer stream. Ahorita nada más va a ser este. Recuerden que ayer hice el martes de Halo. Mañana yo creo que hago stream. Y ahora en esta última oleada lo único que tienen que hacer es eliminar a un Phantom. Si eliminan a este Phantom, avanzan a lo siguiente. Ya no van a caer así enemigos. So while this is going on, we can have a few y tienen que eliminarlo. Can do. Uh, we have a thirty dollar donation from Sparkliness. Good luck, guys. We're all on Discord praying for no buck luck, and of course, did someone say HaloRuns.com? Good luck. Fifteen dollars from Night Magenta. Halo was the first game I played with my dad back when we had to rent an Xbox because we could not save the game. My dad spent forty six hours straight beating the campaign one weekend. He's my hero. And we also have a thousand dollar donation from Anonymous. Alguien acaba de donar mil dólares. Wow. Mil dólares. Alguien donó. First time watching live, so here's a bunch of money because charity. Primera vez que estoy viendo en vivo. And I was in the package. Y aquí hay mil dólares porque pues caridad. Qué onda. Bueno pues qué agradable. Probably one of the higher levels. Señora, señora, quién sea. Mainly because of all the combat. There's a lot of fighting. It's very intense of a fighting. They're gonna go for a slide jump. I only briefly mentioned at the start. They're gonna go for a slide jump straight to an elite because he has a concussion rifle. And with the concussion rifle, we can do some cool jumps again. Okay, and ultimo nivel del juego. In this whole level, to have a concussion rifle, and one of them on easy, which it isn't like feasible to get because it's the toughest. Ultimo nivel del juego. It's called a Bob Elite, and they're golden elites. They spawn randomly. They have a lot of Gracias, shields. Gracias, Rampire. Even on easy, you can't like EMP them. They just, they still have shields. So let alone on legendary, I don't want to think about it. Um, and then that's that one at the start. They're gonna have that concussion rifle for the whole level. And it's just. Te se troll te perdiste ya de todo el juego prácticamente ya están en el último nivel. So with this as well, there's gonna be some scarabs. There's gonna be a lot of grunts. If they flip, there's a chance that they can die. So he's gonna try as best as can to not flip. Those grunts that shoot the plasma pistols. Ahí logró parar esa primera parte. They just disappear. The scarabs coming down have something to do with it. It's weird, but you can get EMP'd there, and they're both alive. See, that's another case of being teleported onto your teammate to 
to save a bit of time. Saves him like driving and then lagging behind the whole time. So there's a little bit more driving. There's sí, no more que enemies to kill en to hace poco, también lo recuerdo. Vamos a ver la diferencia ahora oh, si juega por unos uh, profesionales. Maybe one or two actually. It depends. There's some suicide grunts. A ver, aquí cómo le hace. And those grunts usually kill all their teammates near them. But if they don't, they might have to like headshot one. And the reason they won that is because the teammates are the A ver, veamos cómo se lo pasan. Grunts. They have a uh, they have needle rifles and those are very important because okay, unshielded enemies. Okay, por arriba de los tejados. So they're going to get as much need rifle armor as possible, or Wolfie is going to get as much need rifle armor as possible. Okay. And just like on Exodus, jumping over that gap, jumping off wow. the edge there and shooting blows up the suicide grunts. So yeah, one okay, one. era por el tejado. Era he's got por el tejado. Two rifles and he's looking for the third, which has probably been blasted away. It's not too bad. Oh, no, he's found it. Okay. Just in time for the cutscene. So this is a really hard jump Wolfie's going to do. It's a really hard not guaranteed first try and they both need to make the jump second try that's really good though hmm. and Pedro's gonna cheat <laughs> ahí lo lograron wow que padre estuvo ese salto so what's unlucky is they got a checkpoint they wanted to keep that checkpoint um, que padre to, um, hicieron ese salto like you saw on Nightfall but because they got it when they did, they don't get another one. The reason you want a checkpoint, I don't think I've touched on, is getting a checkpoint, it um, removes like one type of damage from everything. Literally, like enemies, teammates, whatever. Which is like collision damage. They're gonna go for it anyway. Okay. But yeah, which is uh, collision damage. So you can't like splatter, you can't be splatter. Van super bien en este nivel. There's no full damage. There's full timer, which is if you're falling too long, but there's no full damage. So they're gonna go for this launch. A ver. Him. Wolfie went. <laughs> Wolfie Wolfie eso. You know, that's, it's the wrong way. Not the right way to launch. But it works. No. Uh, they need to look for the concussion rifle now though. Okay. They're just gonna run through again. Sí, F por Carter. As the Pedro needs to cheat one more time. Yeah. So... One thing with these caves, they, uh, the reason they've done that jump is they skip a trigger. Some drones are meant to spawn there. We haven't seen drones in this game, and we don't want to. They're really annoying to deal with. They, like, they are just like a one-shot headshot kill, but they fly around. They're really small. Their heads are tiny. And in Halo 2, I don't think they have a head, uh, head hitbox, so you can't even headshot them in Halo 2. So it's genial, it's awful. Thankfully, in Reach, there's a, there is a head. This is Captain Key. So, uh, jumping over that trigger, there's just no way so they can run through. Because they couldn't do the armor lock launch, they're just gonna take the uh, normal route. Again, with that launch, it doesn't save like a lot of time. No salvas mucho tiempo haciendo, pero se ve bastante genial hacer el salto. Is uh, style points, I guess. So, yeah, Wolfie dropped the rocket launcher, so now Pedro has uh, six rockets in reserve, and he instead took the laser. It's really important because just like on Aquí es uh, muy importante the last la munición level package, que conserven. there's going to be more phantoms that I blow up. And that shade turret, just because he doesn't like that one, I guess. Oh no, it's another laser, so he still has a 100 laser. Uh, so yeah, Wolfie's going to run through. Pedro's going to teleport onto him when he gets through this door. A ver, ahí ya lo teletransportó y así and ya no tiene que pasar el otro y arriesgarse a morir. Trigger they're gonna skip. So this trigger takes up most of the room, but not all of it. So Wolfie's gonna take a weird um, old path, and Pedro done some. Uh, ahí hizo el truco con el rifle, rifle de concusión. So straight to this top area. Wolfie's had to take the slower route because he doesn't have a concussion rifle. Uh, Lombard Girl, sí, así es el patrocinio, 49 pesos al mes. Before we done the concussion jump, before we even knew it worked, because we thought you'd still hit a trigger. Um, that's the route we did. And all of you's gonna have to wait a little bit. Unfortunately, there's no co-op bring your buddy towards you kind of trigger. In this little area. There is like at the end of it. Ahí and where Pedro is at right now, there's gonna be some skirmishes and a hunter. 
Ok, ahí hunters. se saltó a los Hunters. Uh, that's the trigger they skip, just because... <laughs> nice ninja. Um, yeah, just because killing those Hunters, it's a pain. And this is one of the things in the game where... Oh, you didn't load the enemies. So that door's meant to open. And you go through the door. Ahora, but they que esa puerta there, se abra. And you can jump Pero como no cargaron a los enemigos, por eso no se abrió. Well so in this room... Y sí, ya se fue el tiempo del récord mundial. Pero no importa. Se es rapidísimo. O sea, imagínense acabar Halo Reach en menos de dos horas en legendario. No ninja. You got the ninja on the other elite. That's that can compensate. Okay. A ver so going up there. there was another strat they could have done if they got a good amount of concussion rifle ammo. But unfortunately, I think they got the worst. Tienen que ahorrar la munición del rifle de concusión. Um, but if you get something that's not the worst, porque es el que lo utilizan para los trucos. Do, so then you wouldn't have to fight those enemies. Now we're coming up to where the concussion rifle really shines, and One of the best, like in my opinion, one of the best co-op tricks on this, well, in this game, definitely on this level, but maybe in this game as well. So Pedro's dropped the concussion rifle to give it to Wolfie, and Pedro's gonna wait. He's not gonna go too far forward. He's okay, right, va a tener que tener right in front of a trigger to start the rest of the level. Para iniciar el resto del nivel. In this bit of level, it's more wave fighting, but there's two phantoms. Two phantoms, two phantoms, instead of sets of three. Okay, vamos so a hacer go for a kind of tricking concussion rifle jump. Nice. Lo logró. And he's done it once, and he's gonna have to do it again if he has enough ammo for it. ¿Y se dan cuenta? Se pasaron ya a la parte ammo. final. No, he's only got three shots. So now Pedro's hit this trigger. Bajaron a Emil del cañón Mac, y así entonces te lo pasas mucho más rápido. Se dieron cuenta de eso. But he's got into it way earlier than he should have. And <laughs> wow. Because of that, he can kill some fans. Excelente truco. Uh, Pedro unfortunately died, so he's gonna have to go back and get his weapons back. Because I'm not too sure the last time they got a checkpoint. Lo vieron, lo vieron. Checkpoints can be brutal. Because Wolfie was one shot doing a concussion rifle jump, um, they wouldn't have got a checkpoint because he was in danger. As the game store rep. So Pedro's gonna have to kill this enemy. And then he's got the rockets and this phantom. It's the only phantom I don't blow up with the Mac cannon. That's why they have delays wow. on the rockets. So if he gets the cannon. Uh, Manuel Lobo him, va a acabar este Pedro sábado el evento, amigo. O sea, todavía queda hoy miércoles, jueves, viernes y sábado. Quedan cuatro días del evento. One has a hammer, one has a fjord gun. And now it's the last phantom there. And that means that whole way fight's done. It's one of the hardest sections. One of the sections most difficult, and it's the one that takes the most time. On a casual playthrough, that is one of the toughest sections, mainly because there's no weapons uh, to use. But Bungie, for some reason, where Wolfie is now, this weapon crate—it's uh, not always there. It's inside a wall. The, like that wall Wolfie's looking at, it's inside there. The only way to get it out. Is to walk up to that wall and like punch it, and then the weapon crate pops out. Okay, so Sometimes, if you're unlucky, the weapon crate can just launch out, fly across the map, and the only good weapons in this whole area you now can't reach. If you don't have that, you're stuck with shotguns, assault rifles, nothing you want to like. You, close quarter weapons when you don't want to be. Okay, y ahora van a hacer la sección final. El limpiar este cuarto para matar a los enemigos. If, Ahora sí, F por Emil, gente. F por Emil. Si tienes tres, infortunadamente, necesitas cinco. Cuatro si eres un dios, pero cinco para estar seguro. Entonces, podría hacer el salto que ha hecho antes para volver a subir, pero está bien. Él solo se ran por el camino. El YOLO run. Esto es llamado. Porque en solo es difícil, pero es posible. Now this is the last minute of the game, so we're coming off on time. Like okay, the último minute. minuto del juego. Uh, but with the zealots, there's quite a few zealots here. Uh, Wolfie's got one. 
Pedro's noob combo and Nam. They're both noob combo and Nam. Ya Just casi termina. And if Wolfie did the uh, concussion jump that he could have done, or if he had the ammo, only one Zella he would have to fight. Only one Zella like comes up to him. The rest sit at the bottom for some reason. So this part, it's just waiting. You're meant to be in the mat cannon blowing up these phantoms. But Pedro, the brave soul he is. Ya vieron como Pedro todo valiente ahí a destruir a los phantoms. Se le not focused on Wolfie. Para que no se enfoquen en el jugador del cañón mac. On Wolfie's screen, that little red dot that's going towards the center. Once that reaches a certain point, Wolfie's going to hop in a mat cannon and shoot it. And then that will be the end of the game. So he's coming up to it. So time is in three, two, one. Y time. se acabó. Lo completaron. En una hora, 35 minutos con dos segundos. Buenísimo. That's a very, very respectable run for a marathon, especially. Okay. Our way will... That was really good. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah. Buenísimo. Uh, a rough start, but... Yeah. Uh, New Alexandria with the Banshees. Oh. Mm -hmm. Night four. All I need to know is did we lose them? Yes. Yeah. The main reason that uh, the runners weren't commentating as Buenísimo. much is because there's a lot of coordination they had to do. There's a lot of, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that, and talking over each other while like explaining what's going on. It would have been tricky. Yeah. So yeah. that's the reason they weren't talking a whole lot, but it was important to, for the run to be as good as it was. Good good. Definitely. Okay, so I want to shout out all the Spanish community on the Spanish restream. Like last GDQ, I was there. Quiero dar un saludo a toda la comunidad en español y a la comunidad en español de GDQ. Yeah, I shout out to the Spanish restream and all the, the Spanish community and speedrunning. A toda la comunidad en español de speedrunning y de la retransmisión en español. Le quiso mandar un saludo a Pedrogas. Shoutouts to BK for that last Salud level. A BK, he only runs for Yeah, he only plays that. <laughs> Uh, what else? Shoutouts to Halo Runs. Uh, uh, Halo Runs. Recently, Halo Runs added a new, new section to his website, and it's cooperative. So you get to use, uh, you get to speed run cooperatively and submit your times on there. Yeah, before that, Corp was tracked on speedrun.com. Um, it's been worked on for months by the site admins, so thank yous like Backflip, Nebraska, and, and, and everyone that helped test it when it was still in its testing stages. It's, yeah, now we have co-op, and it's great. Yeah. I also want to give a, a huge thank you to Vork from the uh, Halo mod team. He's done a lot for the Halo Runs community. He's done a lot of, like, helping Agra a lot of the reasons why a la uh, de speed runs like, de Halo a lot of the speed runs mundo. is because of him. Um, as well as Pro Ace Joker, he's definitely done a lot as well. A Pro Ace Joker, a like, speedrunner también. Get Halo Runs out there. But yeah, it's huge thanks to those two. Yeah. And Haloruns.com, of course. Haloruns.com. Visit Haloruns. Recuerden, gente, si quieren ver más de Halo, váyanse a Haloruns.com. Aquí los pongo. We have a channel for each game. Just go on there. Talk to us. We're pretty friendly. Apart from Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Y se acabó. Eso fue Halo Reach. Thank you once again, Wolfie and Pedrogas, for your awesome Halo Reach run. Let's go ahead and clear out some of these donations. ¿Qué les, pareció? ¿Qué les pareció el speedrun? ¿Qué les pareció? Ver. Estuvo divertido. Tuvieron problemas definitivamente al principio este, en unos trucos que no le salieron. Pero supieron recuperarlo. No es fácil manejar la presión en esta clase de eventos, imagínense. Pero estuvo bueno. Increíble, increíble, estuvo muy genial, increíble, mis respetos a los dos, genial, al final estuvo genial, súper genial, estuvo muy bueno.
Y les digo, ese Pedrogas, este, pues es mexicano, obviamente teníamos que apoyarlo también. Pues bueno, miren, ahí como pueden ver este, lo que sigue a continuación para este evento de Awesome Games on Quick. Va a seguir un speedrun de The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. Luego va a seguir Mega Man X1, que va a ser una carrera de relevos triple. Y luego va a seguir Mega Man 10. Truth Reclaimer donated $100. Thanks. So glad Halo Reach made it into this year's GDQ. One of the best campaigns of the series. Let's beat cancer together. I'm ready. How about you? Estuvo bueno. Bueno, les voy a compartir el link para que puedan meterse este, ustedes a, a ver el resto del maratón. ¿Les parece bien? Para que puedan ver el resto de los juegos. A ver, déjenles paso el link del stream. Es más, hacemos un juego. A ver. Hacemos. A ver. Ayúdenme a hacer esto. Ayúdenme, ayúdenme a hacer esto. Vamos a hacer un raid. Un raid. Ok, ok, le voy a dejar el volumen. Un raid consiste en que se metan. Y pongan un mensaje en específico. Les voy a poner el link de la retransmisión en español de Games on Quick. Y ponen el siguiente mensaje, ¿ok? Prepárense para copiar y pegar y meterse y poner este mensaje, ¿ok? Ponen este mensaje. Necesito que tengan cuenta de Twitch para hacerlo. Ok, prepárense, prepárense. Les estoy pidiendo aquí su apoyo. Miren. Ponen este mensaje, ¿ok? A ver. Aquí les va, aquí les va. Ponen a darle átomos, copian y pegan el a darle átomos en el link que les voy a pasar. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Están listos? Ok, ¿están listos sí o no? A darle átomos, ese es el mensaje que van a tener que copiar y pegar. ¿Ok? A ver, ¿listos? A ver, se los voy a poner ya. Métanse el link que les estoy poniendo y escriben en el chat a darle átomos. Venga. Escriben en el link que les estoy poniendo a darle átomos. Ahí está. Lo ponen en el chat. Lo copian y pegan, copian y pegan. A darle átomos, a darle átomos. Let's go, let's go. Venga, venga, vamos a hacer el raid. Ahí van. A ver, todavía nadie pone. Ok, hasta ahora nadie pone. Ya, ya les puse el link aquí en el chat. Vamos, gente, hagamos el raid, hagamos el raid. Ah, ok, ya. Tele ya puso. Ya, ya puso Teo A darle átomos, exactamente, a darle átomos Bien, ya están ahí poniendo Pero sigan copiando y pegando, copiando y pegando En el chat que les... En el link que les puse Perfecto Ok, sigan, sigan, sigan poniéndolo, sigan poniendo. Copiar y pegar, copiar y pegar. Bien. Bien. Ok, pues bueno, ese es el link que les pasé es para que puedan ver el stream en español del evento. Es la retransmisión oficial en español. Sí, ese es el link que les puse. Órale, Tesh, no sabía qué serás tú. Ver, dejen poner aquí algo. Because it's an RPG that 
Uh, it, I would say is a, it has a bit of a difficulty spike through it, and it's a little bit different from the kinds that we've been seeing lately. So for somebody who wants to start this casually or get into the runs, maybe join the community, what are Ahí está, ya con eso. Gracias, pandilla. Ya con eso ya quedó. Gracias. If you are uh, trying to get in the run, it's really easy. There's a lot of resources. There's a Discord, the speedrun, the speedrun.com website. A lot of guides and eso es board. todo. Gracias. Oh, hasta llegaron 100 personas. Qué chido. I think for the... ¿Mm? I agree there is a difficulty curve and the main way to get past that is to make sure you understand the battle system. Like throughout the run we'll be able to manipulate a lot of turn orders and pick whichever uh, whichever character we want to go and do as much damage as possible and survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds like the community is pretty active, am I right? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of people Eso es todo. Gracias, gracias a los que lo hicieron. Bueno, Pandia, pues bueno, los dejo en ese stream para que puedan ver el resto del evento en español. Gracias a los que estuvieron aquí en este... En el stream de Halo Reach, espero que lo hayan disfrutado, que lo hayan pasado bien. Yo la pasé muy bien con ustedes, ya saben, aquí platicando, viendo este speedrun de Halo Reach. Así que nos vemos en la siguiente pandilla, cuídense mucho, gracias por estar en el stream, nos vemos en la siguiente y pues bueno, disfruten ahí el evento y si pueden ahí apoyar con algún donativo para ellos, pues ya saben, mándenlo directo ahí, ya les pasé. Sale, nos vemos, Vibrate, Wallchain, Mr. J-Hope, a ver quién más, Brian, Señor del Caos, Alan Alpuche... Danny343 Carvajal, a todos los que patrocinaron en el stream, a ver, vamos a mandar saludos de nuevo, a ver, saludos a Lombard Girl, 76150, a Ferras MC, Jesús Parra, Soldaten, Osvaldo Rivera, Manuel Lobo, nos vemos Manuel Lobo, ahí está, Ian Ortiz, World Chain. Ok, ya voy a cerrar aquí. ¿Quién más? Nos vemos Captain Strike, Teshe Troll, Josh, Algus Destructor, Jeremías. Si llegaron tarde, vean el stream resubido. Sí vale la pena que lo vean. Nos vemos Pedro MC, Antonio Navarrete, Captain Strike. Nos vemos ahora sí todos, cuídense. Y nos vemos en la siguiente. Ahora sí a todo mi cambio. Y fuera.